Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are going to look at how to use a looper pedal. Now they're a really, really great practice tool. Definitely one of those pedals that you really should have. But I meet a lot of people all the time and say, well, I bought one, but I can't make it work properly. It doesn't seem to loop right. And uh, you know, th there's a few little tricks that I can give you that'll help you make the most of uh, your looper pedal for practice. So that's what, kind of what I want to go through in this uh, little session today. So uh, the first thing for those of you who don't know is about what a looper pedal does. So basically it records your guitar and then and plays back the bit that you record over and over again in a loop. So you can use it lots of different ways, but uh, one example, let's say I want to work on my blues licks or whatever. Uh, I've got a little kind of blues rhythm pattern, say... Uh, something like that. So I'm going to hit the looper to start recording, hit the looper again to finish recording, and it'll loop back that little section, right? So I'm going to start... It's just going to repeat that one little bit in between my two clicks of that pedal button. And I can... Whatever, I can sit there and then start to, you know, play about with my licks or whatever it is that I want to work on that day. So that's the basic kind of thing of what it is. Now, uh, which looper pedal should you buy? Because there's a loads and loads on the market. Um, I don't like the ones that have got stuff other than just the looper function, really. I don't like the ones that have got drums and things in it. That, that gets a little bit kind of complicated for me. Uh, generally, the one-button ones I, I quite like. The uh, TC Electronic Ditto is probably the standard one. Sounds really good, very easy to use. I use, um, well, I'm using here the Ditto X2. Now, the X2's got a second button on it to use for starting and stopping. So uh, on, the, on the single button one, you have to double tap it to stop it, which is sometimes a little bit of a pain, but, um, you know, for home practice, practice it's great just if I'm running a workshop or whatever I prefer to have a, a dedicated stop button um, so uh, that's the, the you know there's lots of different ones to try it usually they're just going to have a start and a stop button uh, which is the just one button and then a loop level to control how loud your loop is uh, you know the TC electronic one's really good the, the uh, Digitech Jam Man one's really good there's a good one built into the timeline if you've got a Strymon timeline already that's got a looper built into it uh, the Boomerang is one that's got several loops kind of available on it there so the, all of those ones are ones that I'd uh, recommend that you check out but again it's you know have a look around and see what you like you do find them second hand a bit as well uh, because people can't figure out how to use them so that could work in your advantage if you have a look on eBay or or whatever so uh, let's talk about a few little tips now the first tip is to play before you start recording if you hit the loop button and then start playing there's usually going to be a little bit of a gap there between you hitting the button and starting playing no matter how well you try and time it if you just click it and start it's generally going to be a little bit wonky right so you want to start playing first get your tempo and only when you feel like your tempo is nice and solid and you're tapping along then you tap on one okay we're going to talk about that in a second so um, just start playing first let's say I'm going to go starting there now here particularly with chords if you press the looper and just started you wouldn't get the the right notes hanging over and because you're trying to loop it really you want those extra strings if you're doing a chord those strummed notes kind of that you might not be picking right on beat one that you picked on beat four of the last bar you want them kind of ringing out still as you go for your loop so really really important to start playing before you hit the loop button that's my tip number one uh, tip number two you really want to be hitting your your button, the record and the, the stop button, which is the same button, uh, right on the beat, on beat one usually. You can do it on other beats if you want to get fancy later on, but generally it's beat one. So a good thing to practice is like that little slow, uh, slow bluesy kind of a thing. So just playing first, two, three, four, one, two, three. Get your tempo, so I'm pretty cool with that. Three, four, one. Now, it's always a matter of getting it so it syncs really nicely. I, f I actually find it a little hard to do sitting down for some reason. I much prefer operate your looper standing up. But um, I think as I kind of step side to side instead of tap my foot. But definitely kind of tapping your foot or keeping your body moving is a really, really good idea. Uh, some people find it helpful to tap their foot and then just move it onto the loop on beat one. So if we had this again. Three, four, one, two. Okay, 
So just using your foot's already tapping and just moving it onto the to the tap button. You know, it's, it's a really big deal. It's learning how to get the loops to kind of go around in a nice circle is really what you're after. Most people struggle with that, and it does take a bit of practice. Don't expect it, like everything else on the guitar, it's unlikely you're going to get it straight away. So be cool with the idea, it's going to take you a little bit of time to get that together. If you don't get it right, you're doing this and you go one, two, three, or whatever, then it trips over. And you definitely, definitely don't want to be trying to practice over that when the loops kind of not quite there. It always seems a little bit weird. But like I said, it's going to take practice to be able to get it to sync. And I don't get them syncing every time either, you know. Sometimes it just kind of doesn't, you know, I might, depending on what I'm playing, you know, I might not quite sit with the looper exactly right and then I have to stop and start again. There's a, a function on the looper that we'll talk about in a little bit to um, show you what to do if you, if you get a, a wrong layer later on when we talk about layers. So that's, it. that's the, so far, the really important thing is play before you start recording and make sure that you tap your foot. That's, that's a really big deal. Now, um, if you're gonna play for a long time, it's very likely that your time will falter, that you'll either speed up or slow down. Okay, I do. If I was to play, say, a whole jazz standard all the way through, like 16 or 32 bars, the tempo that I start with and the tempo that I finish with unlikely to be exactly the same, right? So I'm going to likely to speed up during the tune or slow down. I shouldn't. That's something I'm still working on, you know, and somebody with really great time wouldn't do that. But it's still pretty difficult, actually, for 16 bars or 32 bars to stay perfectly consistent. So one of the things that I use if I'm playing something long like that, like I'm working on a jazz standard, you know, is a good example, um, I'll often put a metronome down. So I'll set my metronome, just sit it beside me, put it at a certain tempo, and then I'm going to make sure I tap my foot exactly with one of the metronome beats while I'm playing. So I might just start off with a vamp, click the metronome, off we go. I'll play the thing. As long as I'm keeping my time with the metronome, and then when I, at the end, I tap my foot again right on beat one with the metronome, it's going to stay in time, right? And then you can turn your metronome off, okay? And that way you're going to get a really nice, consistently timed loop. Because what, you know, when it, if it gradually speeds up, then when it goes back to the beginning again, it's slower, feels really weird. You know, so that, that timing thing is a, is a pretty big deal. So don't be afraid of using the metronome for that. I think that's a really, uh, I do it nearly all the time if I'm doing like a long, even a 12 bar blues, you know, to, to make sure that it's exactly consistent can be a little bit tricky. It depends on the speed and, and uh, lots of other factors, the complexity of what you're playing as well. But, and it's a good thing to work on to try and keep your, your tempo consistent for, for 12 or more bars. But, you know, you might struggle with that a little bit. So using, using a metronome to help you with that is really good. Um, Okay, tip number four here is to experiment with uh, overdub layers. Now, uh, when I mentioned that it records a, a layer, what have I got in here now? Okay, oh, can't use that because that was the bad one. So let's let's do another one. Uh, uh, okay, two, three. So I'm going one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so I've got my little loop going on now. So if I hit the loop button again, it's gonna let me do an overdub so I could record another layer over the top. So I'm gonna hit it now. Three, four, one, two, so I might have. Okay, so that layer is now there as well. I might have. I can turn off that overdub mode and now I'm back to just having my regular old loop. I can stop it when I want, start it again. Stop, two, three, four, start. So one of the other cool things that you get with a looper pedal is the ability to undo the last layer. Okay, the last time that you cycle recorded, you know, uh, especially if you're doing overdubs, this can be a pretty useful feature. So. Uh, if you're doing your, uh, okay, so this is working. We hit the overdub. Oops. Oh, oh no. Okay. What do I do? So I press and hold, and it disappears. 
Okay, it's gone back to its regular kind of green colour now. So now I can tap it again, the light's gone red, I can overdub my thing. Turn the overdub off. Okay, if you forget to turn the over if you forget to turn the overdub off, uh, everything that you play will end up going over the top. So let's play, let's overdub, perhaps some chords. So it's still recording, okay? So that's all of the basics of how to actually use your looper, but let's look at some specific things that you might like to practice. Uh, one, the most obvious one is your licks, blues licks, you know, to start off with. Um, if you've got a particular lick, the good, you know, a real good thing is to practice the lick over and over again to see how many different ways you can play the lick. So if we've got a... Uh, You just take a little blues phrase like that and then really just jam over it and play about with it as much as you like. Remember that uh, the sounds passing through it don't make any difference, so uh, quite a nice thing again would be to have that loop going, maybe turn on a bit of distortion. Okay, it's not going to affect the whole loop if it's at the end. Okay, now this is a really important thing as well that you want to place your looper pedal at the end of your effects chain. Okay, so especially if you want to play about, you want to do some cool stuff with effects, say, uh, let's just delete that. Let's turn on a couple of delays. Okay, oh, this is pretty trippy. Okay, if I want to record all of those delays, it's really important that the loopers become after them all. Because if it comes before, everything that comes out of the looper is going to go through those. And maybe I don't want to have everything with those effects. So learning to experiment with layers is another really, really cool thing to, uh, that you definitely want to check out. Uh, stuff like playing on two and four, the chips for a, for a blues is a really nice thing. Just having your, you know... Having you, you know, or one. You know, there's lots of different ways of kind of layering up that sort of blues thing. Uh, also, really nice to learn about how to layer up different chord grips as well. If you. Uh, was just basically C chord to G chord, well with a B bass, but then I overdubbed it with a, well I was just listening to the effect of trying out different chord grips over the top of that, so you can start to get a bit of an understanding of how the things that you might want to work with if you're recording. Um, great also for kind of jazz things, uh, if you want to practice over a particular chord sequence, uh, you know a 2 five, one is a kind of a common... Um, thing like this
you know, so you can just take like a little chord sequence and then start experimenting with playing over that chord sequence. So rather because it can be just licks, it can be uh, exploring layers. Um, I'm really into, I love doing the, the, you know, exploring big layers of stuff and, and, and trying out, uh, you know, soundscapey sort of things. Uh, uh, there's a lot of guys around that have got big looper pedals with, with, you know, the ability to record lots of different layers of loops. But I must admit, I can kind of amuse myself for lots of hours just playing about with, uh, if I get some effects going on. Um, let's see. Let's go for plenty of delays. the tempo, let's go. Okay, we're cool with that. So now I might try adding another layer. So it's the same chords, it's just an A minor chord going to a G chord. So I hit the overdub button, maybe something. happy with that last loop, so I can just undo it, right? Press and hold, gone back to the straight one. Yeah, here we go, try this one. It's better. I might turn the overdub off, Let's put a massive big sea of reverb down see what I can come up with for this. Okay, and I can solo over it. something like this. I mean, I can get lost doing this sort of stuff for days and days and days, you know. Uh, but it's really good fun. That's the kind of thing that I think you can get into. If it, once you feel a bit confident with, with starting and stopping your looper pedal, you've got all of these different things that you can practice. And, and they're a great tool. They really are. T something uh, I kind of wish I'd got into them sooner. But uh, if you haven't got one, uh, I'll put up my recommended ones on my website again. And go and check it out. And uh, hopefully that'll help you get started with your looper pedal. And I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.